Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ, and uh, welcome back. We're doing another Bible If uh, in the book of Matthew, part two. So if you want to turn to Matthew 6, 19, that's where we left off, and let's get to the next Bible If. Matthew 6, 19. I am a King James Bible believer. So um, I'm going to turn to some of the verses, and I'm just going to quote some of the verses. So pause the video and turn to the verses. Make sure that I'm telling the truth. And you should be following along in your King James Bible. All right? It is God's perfect written word in English. So, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Why is this? Why are you supposed to lay up treasures in heaven? and not on earth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Okay. Uh, I might be quoting some verses, some verses I come to my, I'm not, it's not in my notes. Okay. But um, where treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where it talks about loving not, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Okay, love not the world. I always teach, I believe that's talking about sin. The way of the world is sin. If you love the world, you love sin. But it also says neither the things in the world. What's that talking about? You shouldn't love anything in this world more than you love Jesus Christ. You should not put, be worried about building up treasures here in this world. And we're going to get to it. Money, riches. You should be storing up treasures in heaven. Prayer. Prayer. He keep uh, Revelation, Jesus has the vial that has the prayer of the saints. He keeps your prayers. Uh, reading the Bible, studying the Bible, uh, singing hymns that bring glory to God, preaching the gospel, whether it's lay, laying gospel tracts places, you get up the courage to hand people gospel tracts, you get um, to where you verbally preach. You know, sometimes it's just handing, sometimes you're like, let me tell you about Jesus Christ. Um, you should get to the point where you're preaching the gospel. That's rewards. Um, spiritual sacrifices, you know, sanctification, uh, looking for that blessed hope, which we're going to be talking about. Okay. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. You can store, you're supposed to be worried more about storing up treasure in heaven. Now, verse 22, we're going to get to the Bible if. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of life, light. That's our first Bible if. Okay? So remember the word light there. We're going to talk about, there's three ifs here, and we're going to talk about all three ifs. Okay? 23, but if thine eye be evil, there's the second if, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. So we have light, we have darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? There's the second if. Okay. In verse, verse 24, no man can serve two masters. So we got light, darkness, and people professing to have light. And how great is that darkness if people say uh, profess to have light, but they have darkness in them? Okay, you got people that want darkness, they don't profess the light. Okay. Now, uh, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Okay. I looked up the Webster's 1828 Dictionary for mammon. Okay. Riches, wealth, or the God of riches. God of riches. Okay. Now, as we're going to go into this, we're going to talk about the light, we're going to talk about the darkness. And you can't serve two masters. People just say it's money. Yeah, it's money, but for instruction and righteousness, it's the flesh. All right? The love of money is the root of all evil. I'm getting ahead of myself. But it's the flesh. So we're going to talk about the flesh. You know, before you're saved, after you're saved. And instruction and righteousness when you're saved. John 3.19. If you want to turn to John 3.19. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light. 
No, I didn't start at 16, but he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. And I don't have it all memorized. But you kind of get the idea that it's talking about Jesus. But we're going to hit another verse that's talking about Jesus, where Jesus is God. Because their deeds were evil. Right? Men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. Okay. First John 1 John 1.4, we're going to turn there. Okay, we got, once again, we've got light and we've got darkness. What do I believe the light is? Okay. First John 1 John 1.4 And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light. Jesus Christ is God. Okay, the light there is talking about Jesus Christ. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sins. There's no darkness in him. Notice what we read up there in uh, Matthew 6 where it said, uh, um, if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, well, we just read there, there is no darkness in him. Talking about Jesus Christ. Do you have Jesus Christ in you? Right. Now, um, so the light, I, I'm, for this instruction righteousness and for this study, light is Jesus Christ. Darkness, it's talking about, um, I believe, the flesh. Sin. Right? And what does it lead to when it's talking about when we get into two masters? Uh, the sin of um, worshiping material things, wealth. Okay, the flesh wants this, the flesh wants that. It takes money, it takes money, and we'll talk about it. All right? Romans 8, 5. For they that are after the flesh mind the things of the flesh. Now the I talks about I, single. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, Jesus Christ. Right. You can't serve two masters, Jesus Christ. Now it talks about mammon, I understand that. But the flesh is what drives you to want to be rich. Right. The world's thing is, is if you want to have all this stuff, you got to be rich. And you need all this stuff. It's just great to want all this stuff. Right. So mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things that are of the Spirit, capital S Spirit, I. You have Jesus Christ in you. You have light in you. The world's to see it. Right? Darkness. If you have darkness in you, it's people who have chosen the world. The flesh is the master. So either God is the master or your flesh is the master. Remember, this. we could use this for so much because two, you can't serve two masters for instruction, righteousness, and just common sense with people who have experience. If I have a task out there, Okay, let's say I had a tree cut down that I couldn't cut down, and there's two guys that were doing it. Okay, I want you to know that you're in charge, Bob. Also, you're in charge, John. You're both in charge. When they disagree on something, what happens? Chaos. Everything starts to fall apart. Okay, here's 20 people that need to do this task, and John, you're in charge. Oh, and Joe, you're in charge also. It doesn't work that way. When it comes to stuff, you cannot serve two masters. They get into a disagreement and get into a fight, you're going to start, their people are going to start taking sides. Okay. You can't have two masters. And when it comes to the Bible and what we're actually talking about, the flesh versus Jesus Christ, I mean, look out there, brothers and sisters in Christ. We're trying to teach Jesus Christ to false converts who believe in a Jesus Christ, but not the Jesus Christ. The lost world who just flat out reject Jesus Christ. They want the world. They want their sin. And we try to preach the real Jesus Christ to them, and they hate them. They love the world. Or they love their a Jesus Christ, which is okay with serving two masters. Okay. 
But remember, we're of the spirit, we're after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Okay? We're spiritually minded, brothers and sisters, and we walk after the spirit. Can we still sin and fall into temptation? Absolutely. But we're to hate evil and we're to despise evil. Don't fall into the trap of trying to um, justify sin. Okay? Don't fall into the trap of, uh, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself, resurrecting the old man, the old master. Okay? Your body was in charge. It was 100% about the flesh when you're lost. You're carnally minded walking after the flesh. You get saved. That old man dies. He's not the master anymore. Jesus comes in. He's the master. He tells you what to do. What not to do and what to do. Okay. Philippians 4.8 Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, what Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. What sort of things are honest? Jesus cannot lie. He's God. He's truth. What he tells us is truth. Okay. Sanctify thy truth. Thy word is truth. His word is truth. It's not lies. It's not error. Okay. What sort of things are just? Jesus is a righteous God that's going to judge us at the judgment seat of Christ. And we're supposed to have our eyes on that for rewards. And in heaven, remember, put your treasures in heaven. Um, and at the great uh, white throne, he's going to judge people. He's the judge. He's just. Okay. Whatsoever things are pure, his word is pure. Jesus is pure. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. We're going to get into another verse later in another Bible if, so we'll wait till we get to that when it's better. But of good report, I'll say a little bit. You're supposed to have a good report of them that are without as well as those that are within the body of Christ. But things that are of good report. People should see Jesus in you. Okay? You're supposed to be preaching Jesus. You're supposed to be in Christ Jesus. You're a new creature. You're supposed to be living a life of Christ. Okay? You should have a good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. I threw this in there because your eye, single, you have the light. We're supposed to keep our eye on Jesus Christ. He's in us, but we're all supposed to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. And when we take our eyes off Jesus Christ, what happens? It's usually when we fall. We stumble and we fall. Okay. So, okay, the single, the single eye is Jesus Christ. We're, whereas the two masters, as we're talking about, uh, Jesus Christ and, like I said, mammon, the God of money, the wealth, physical things, the fleshly things of this world, the flesh. Okay. Uh, two masters. So, your carnal mind and walking after the flesh, the flesh is the master, as we said. Spiritually minded and walking after the spirit, Jesus Christ is our master. Now, okay. when we get saved, Paul, uh, Paul warns us, for instruction in righteousness, warns us not to resurrect the old man. Brothers and sisters in Christ, don't resurrect the old man, old woman. Okay? Don't start bringing that master up. Fight. Stand, stand, stand. Uh, how do we do it? Uh, obeying God's word. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay. Now let's get to the third if that was in that section. How great is that darkness? They claim to have light, but there's darkness in them. How great is that darkness? We just read um, 1 John 1, 4. And in him is no darkness at all. Okay? The darkness, like I said, sin. Okay, we do have sin in us. I, I'm still a sinner. And someone can sit there and say, well, the darkness could be sin. Yes, but for our instruction in righteousness, you've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. If you take your eyes off Jesus, what happens? You fall into sin and temptation. You start staring away from the Word of God. And, but how great is that darkness? Another way to look at it, brother and sister Christ, is false convert. What does God um, feel, what did God think of as a false convert? 2 Peter 2.22 but it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog was returned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed in her wallowing in the mire. Why am I bringing this up? Well, for instruction righteousness, brother and sister of Christ, 
I have a lot of you out there that have experienced this like I have. It is so hard to preach the Word of God, Jesus Christ, the capital L Lord Jesus Christ, to people that are part of organized religion. It is so hard. Okay? Especially those they claim to have the light, whether they're of organized religion that has not that doesn't have a Jesus, or organized religion that has a Jesus. Okay? They believe they have the light, but they have darkness. Yeah. Matthew 23, 15. It's hard to deal with these people. You guys can attest to it, brothers and sisters of Christ. We have I have saved fam I have saved family members, I do. I have a brother in Christ, but I have a lot of professing Christians in my family. They're hard to deal with. Hmm. Matthew 23, 15. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Okay? I didn't say this before, but verse 23 in Matthew 6, I mean, you can kind of hold your place because we're just going in order on Bible ifs. It says, If there, therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Now, this is the Old Testament, and I'm applying it to us today. And it says, How great is that darkness? There's an exclamation point. It's serious. It's a serious thing. Okay? It's hard to deal with people, brother and sister in Christ, that are part of organized religion. So, for instruction in righteousness, the if there, if thy eye be single, that's the condition. What's the, what's the action? Thy whole body shall be full of light. Sometimes I get the matter of the action. If thy eye be single, there's the action. Then what's the condition? The whole body shall be full of light. If thy eye be evil, okay, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Brothers and sisters, sanctification, sanctification, putting that flesh down, put it down, put it down, put it down. Okay? Stay in the Word of God. Make sure your home is sanctified. Uh, not sanctified, uh, sanctification. Make sure your home is a godly home. It's the only place that you can have that's an abstain from all appearance of evil zone, as I call it. It's an appearance of evil free zone. Okay? Make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Prayer, reading the Bible, studying the Bible, uh, worshiping the Lord through hymns. You can do it with your life, but I'm talking about when it comes to singing old hymns. Okay? And uh, preaching the gospel, the ministry of reconciliation, spiritual sacrifices. Okay? Don't let that old man come back up. You don't, there's not supposed to be two masters. When that old man, you try to resurrect the old man, you tend to get away from the Word of God. You tend to take your eyes off Jesus Christ. So Matthew 6.33, we're going to continue. No, I'm sorry, Matthew 6.25. Go back to Matthew 6.25. I was looking at here and I was like, that's not continuing, it's jumping way down there. Matthew 6.25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, okay, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now you go read about Solomon. He was rich. I mean, the richest man to ever live, physically. Right? Uh, 666 talents of gold, and it's an interesting number, 666. Uh, he had everything. You know, 100, uh, I think it was 300 wives and 700 concubines. I can't remember the exact thing. I mean, he had everything. And what was his attitude towards all that? It's vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Okay. But the world, what he's talking about here, he takes care of the world. Where 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is to, 
which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, there's our if right there, wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, that's the act, uh, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, the condition, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whether withal shall we be clothed? For after all for after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Okay. We are supposed to trust the Lord. And we're going to get into this. You're not supposed to just sit there and go, okay, God's just going to give me everything and just sit there. That's not it. We're to trust the Lord. Okay? You're not supposed to be living in doubt and worry, you know, and fear. We're not given to fear. You're not supposed to worry about next week and saying, well, I've got a job, but I could lose my job. What happens if I lose my job? Our government, I mean, our government can go under at any at overnight, and it can. It can go under overnight, and... And my money in the bank, I mean, the bank could crash or, you know, my car could break down, you know. And the, you're to trust God, okay? You're to trust the Lord. He will take care of us. Uh, one of the things that will keep you from trusting the Lord, uh, Matthew 13, 22, and we're going to go to Mark 4, 19. Okay, we're going to start in Matthew 13, 22. They're both the same story, but in two different Gospels. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. Okay. Um, I talk to people in my dream, okay, and like I said, it's not going to happen. I love this home. I'm going to die in this home probably, or Jesus is going to come back and get me while I'm in this home. I love it here. But I always talk about I'd love to have a cabin some, a small home with a little bedroom, one bathroom, 600 square foot home. It'd be nice on property that has a view of the mountain. Something that I could set out on the deck like I do here. Just something small. And I was talking to a lady at the bank about this. And her home, I guess, I think it was around 2,200, 2,400 square foot. My house here is like under 1,500. Maybe a little bit under 1,500. She's, got, and she's like, I don't see how I could live. I could never live in a small place like that. It's just her and her husband, and it's like, I could never live in a small place like that. And I'm like, what's going on there? The deceitfulness of riches. Right? They choke the word, and, and he become unfruitful. Now, understand this verse is talking about salvation when you're try, people are trying to preach the gospel. But I'm saying for instruction in righteousness today, the cares of this world can get you to start doubting the Lord. Falling into the trap of the deceitfulness of riches, you know, the treasures of this world, wanting things and coveting things and things becoming idolatry, okay? they can get you to start doubting the Lord. Mark 4, 19. And like I said, that woman's like, I can't, I can't even fathom it. Why? Because she's lost. She's not content with food and raiment. Mark 4, 19. But anyway, like I said, just letting you know, brothers and sisters, I'd love to have a small, small place. I have a bedroom that doesn't get used. My daughter doesn't come out as much. We've talked about her in past videos. And a bedroom just sits there. The living room, during the summer, I don't even use the living room. I'm sitting out on the deck all the time. You know, I'm either going for a walk, sitting out on the deck, or I'm in here doing Bible studies, watching them, or studying and doing some, uh, videotaping in here, videotaping. I don't really use the living room. I don't use the bedroom, the one bedroom. And honestly, I could use this room as my office room slash bedroom, and that'd be just fine. So I don't need three bedrooms. But anyway, that's going off on a tangent. But yeah, I'd love to have a small home. Easier to take care of. Mark 4.19 And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. Cares of this world, we talked about it. Deceitfulness of riches. And here's another one. And the lust of other things enter in. You know, sin can get you to take your eyes. Well, we know it can get you to take your eyes off Jesus, but it can get you also to doubt Him. Your flesh tries to get you to doubt Him. To doubt his word. You don't want to let that happen, brothers and sisters in Christ. Matthew 6, 8. Matthew chapter 6, verse 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them. 
For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask them. Ask Him. Right? He knows what you need before you ask Him. Okay? We're going to get into this. He likes to hear from you. You need to pray. You need to ask God for things. Absolutely. But you need to trust God. He knows what He's doing. Right? He's going to provide. We're not given to fear. Don't let things get in the way of you and the Lord. Matthew 6, 33. Now we're back to Matthew verse, chapter 6, verse 33 and 34. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I wanted to keep going because it's still part of this if. Okay? He's saying that you shouldn't worry about the world and be focused on the world hardcore. Okay? He's saying, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now for us today, because this is Old Testament, sometimes, let's see, the kingdom of heaven is always a reference to the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of heaven subject violence and the violent take it by force. It's another uh, verse in there. And the kingdom of God, from my understanding, can be a reference to the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. Or it can be a reference to this for us today, Romans 14, 17. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. You know, keeping our eyes on this world and worry, worrying about things in this world, cares of this world, riches. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Okay? Our for eyes need to be on Jesus. That's the first thing we look at. The ifs here are about keeping your eyes on what matter first. Jesus Christ is what matters first. He'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. Your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. The cares of this world can distract you sometimes from your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. How many people can say amen to that? I've fallen into the trap of the cares of this world um, getting in the way of my walk with the Lord. The, the, the lust of deceitful riches. The lust of the flesh. Sin. Okay. Keep trusting the Lord. He knows what He's doing. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Okay. I want to go over real quick the riches of this world because we're talking about that. 1 Timothy 6.10 For the love of money is the root of all evil. While some have coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Right? The love of money is the root of all evil. We talked about you can't serve two masters. Um, you cannot serve God and mammon. Right? I understand that. But the love of money is the root of all evil. People Not having money, but the love of money. And the reason I have to throw that in there is because people always say, if you have lots and lots of money, you're a millionaire or something like that, plus uh, you're going to have sorrows in your life, absolutely. And I'd never want to be that rich at all. Okay? I'd love to be debt free. I got the house and that's it. But you have these people that strive in order to get that money today. You've got to compromise and you've got to give in to sin. And the flesh runs you to actually be a millionaire plus type thing, you've got to do a lot of compromising. So people say it's just people who are rich. Uh, oh, wait a second. You can still have a love of money and be poor. You ask me, what are you talking about? There's people that are dirt poor, broke, that they keep gambling because they're hoping to strike it rich someday because they want to be rich. They gamble, gamble, gamble. But they're poor because they throw all their money away. Why is that? It's the love of money. Right? These casinos and everything, it's evil because they're based on the love of money and they attract people that have the love of money. Ephesians 1.3 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Okay? Right there, we're going to read another verse after this real quick. Uh, spiritual blessings. You can have spiritual blessings. God opens this book to me. God shows me things. Brothers and sisters in Christ out there, uh, God shows you and you share it with me. Okay? Uh, I've corrected people. People have corrected me. Let's see, what does it say? All scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine. God opens the word and shows me major doctrine. He opens and shows me who he is. He allows me to have a personal relationship with him. For doctrine, for reproof, to be reproved and to reprove. Correction, to be corrected and to correct. And instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 
spiritual blessings in this book. Okay. Psalms 34, 8. Okay. Psalms 34, verse 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Okay. You trust, we're going back to trusting in the Lord. Now there's physical blessings. We, God can give us physical, physical blessings. Um, what is that song? Uh, Count your blessings one by one. See what the Lord has done. Okay. I couldn't count. I mean, I couldn't count all my blessings in the sense that there's so many of them. It's like I couldn't write them all down in a book. It'd take tons of books to write them down. And a very, very good memory going all the way back even when I was lost. Okay. I could have died and gone to hell before God saved me. He kept me going. There's a lot of times where I could have died. Okay. God will give you many blessings in this life. Physical blessings. He blessed me with the garden. It's a blessing. Give God the glory. Give Him thanks. Uh, the chicken coop that we talked that I talked about my major projects, cutting some of the trees down, um, the hillside a little bit, the food that I have, the clothing, being able to be part of the ministry. I can go on and on and on. Physical blessings. He's opened the scriptures to me. He's taught me so much. He's helped me to have a closer relationship with Him. Okay. But one thing I want to tell you, brothers and sisters of Christ, never, ever, ever fall into the trap of loving the blessing more than the one that gives the blessing. Okay. I do not love this garden out here more than I love Jesus Christ and His perfect written word. Same thing goes with the chicken coop. Same thing goes with this house, the deck, the view, the hillside, on and on and on. I praise the person that gives me the blessing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Give Him the credit. Okay. When you fall into loving the physical blessings more than the one that gives the blessings, you tend to forget about the spiritual blessings and glorifying riches over God. Absolutely. Okay. You've given God the glory in all things and given Him thanks in all things. That's what we're supposed to do. Give God glory in all things. Give Him thanks in all things. When you start falling into the things of this world, the riches of this world, and even as a Christian, brother and sister in Christ, you fall into the physical blessings and you start getting really into them and you start, you know, they start becoming an idol sometimes. Uh, you start coveting things. Well, I got this, but I want more. I want more. Uh, no, you just need to thank the Lord for the blessings. Okay. Matthew 7, 7. Let's turn to Matthew 7, 7. And we are going to read... From 7-7, seven, seven. Yeah. kind of went over to the next side, 7-7 seven, seven to 12. So we're going to read for a little bit. So, Ask and it shall be given you, seek and ye shall find. We're going to talk about the seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Or what man is there of you whom if his, if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Is that supposed to be when someone asks you for bread? Is that supposed to be the reaction? You give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? It's a question mark. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give you good things to them that ask him? Something I have to highlight there is it says good things. People say, well, I ask God for all kinds of things and I don't get it. Okay, good things. It goes back to trusting the Lord again. There's things that might seem like it's not a big deal. Why won't God give it to me? God understands what's going on. Okay, he knows what's best for you. He knows what's best for me. So there's some things that might not seem, that might seem innocent. Why won't God give me this? But he knows better. He knows what's going on. You need to trust him. But it says good things. Well, I asked God for a million dollars. He didn't. He didn't give it to me. I just don't know why. I, I did what he said. You know, I asked him, and he just didn't give it to me. It says good thing. Would it be a good thing for you to be rich? No. So I have to point that out. It says good things to them that ask him. Verse twelve. We're going to twelve. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Now, two things to get from this. Okay. 1 Timothy 3, 7. 
1 Timothy 3, 7, for in strife from life, it says, If, then ye be in evil, know how to give good gifts. There's three ifs in there. Two of them are like, uh, it shouldn't be like this. If you do this, you're going to do that. That doesn't make sense. It's not supposed to be like that. 1 Timothy 3, 7, Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into a reproach and the snare of the devil. Snare of the devil. You're supposed to have a good uh, report of them that are without as well as them that are within. If a brother in Christ asks for help, do you do something else? It's like a, I've, um, I've said this before. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you email me and you talk with me. Give me your testimony and we talk. And even if you're lost out there, my email's out there for you. You email me and you talk. We talk. I preach the gospel and we talk a little bit. And you say, I kind of like a King James Bible. I will go online and buy a King James Bible and have it mailed to you. I've done that before. Uh, certain books on certain subjects, I've had it mailed to people before. Right? But if someone comes to me and says, you know what? I have a really do I have a dollar store, dollar store King James Bible, and I really can't afford a good Bible. And, I, and I'm like, well, you know what? Let me get you a book on cooking. Or better yet, you know what? Let me just do a box full of you know, rocks or charcoal and send it to you. It makes no sense. You send them a Bible. They ask for a Bible. Someone needs some money for food. You, I'm, I'm one that I'll go buy food for them. Okay? I'll buy the food. I'll buy the gas. Okay? If it's someone that I trust and believe is saved, I'll send them some money if they need money for food or something like that. you got to be careful nowadays online. But you know what I'm saying. Okay? We're supposed to have a good report of them that are without. Oh, you, that, that guy... He's part of like the organized religions we see today. Uh, if you're not one of them, they don't care about you. You know, you're worthless. You're a dog. You know, if you don't join us, you're deserve, You're worthy to. You just. You should die. All right? They, they, they kill you thinking they do God's service. Right? There's a lot of uh, organized religions out there where it's just all about their little group, their uh, cult, a cult group. We're supposed to have a good report of them that are without. Okay? How we treat people that are lost and how we treat people that are saved, brothers and sisters in Christ. How we treat the lost world and your brothers and sisters in Christ, the lost world sees it. They do. Okay? A good example is replacement theology. I forgot I wrote that down. Replacement theology. You've got this group of people claiming to be Christians and they hate the Jewish people. They hate them. The lost world looks at them and it's not a good report a bad report because it comes back on us. That's not a true Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian man. They don't hate the Jews. They don't try to replace the Jews. Right? Like I said, you got to have a good report of them without. And I want to throw this in there. If someone looks at you and go, he's, he's, he's dumb, he's retarded, he used to go out and get drunk with us, but now he won't get drunk with us anymore. Guess what that is, brothers and sisters in Christ? A good report. Ah, oh, he used to play video games with us left and right, and now he won't play video games anymore. Ah, oh, he used to go to movies. I, like I told in one of my old studies, I used to be my mom's movie buddy. We'd only go see movies or go out to eat. There's, and I'm like, once I got saved, I'm like, there's nothing else we can do. That's all we had. And it was a movie buddy. And I stopped watching Hollywood movies and TV shows. I cut him out of my life. Sanctification. Okay. It's a good report from without. You can have someone say something that the world thinks is mean or evil, and to us it's a good report because we're standing for the Word of God. We're sanctify letting God sanctify our life. We're created in Christ Jesus. It all becomes, goes from being 100% about the flesh to 100% about Jesus Christ. Okay. That can be a good report. Now, the other part in there that talks about where it says... Uh, get, uh, your Father which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask Him. But before that, it said, um, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Matthew 7, 7. The seeking part. Okay? One thing people tend to forget sometimes, and I want to go to the Old Testament, because I don't really go to the Old Testament that much um, when doing a lot of my meaty good studies. I'll do it for... Um, was it courageous man, foolish man? And sometimes God will open it up. But I kind of want to try to start going to the Old Testament more. So 2 Chronicles 16, 11. Seek and ye shall find. Ask 
uh, was it? Knock and the door shall ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. And behold, the acts of Asia, first and last, lo, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Asa in the thirty and nine year of his reign was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceeding great. Okay. So what did he do? His disease is, he, is great. Did he, did he go to God? Yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the physicians. And Asa, and Asa, Asa slept with his father and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. Okay, ask, it's talking about ask and it shall be given, seek and ye shall find, knock and it shall be opened, and, the, and it shall be opened unto you. Remember Jesus, uh, Jesus Christ is the one we're supposed to go to first. I'm trying to get my thoughts together. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you should always go to Jesus Christ first and ask him. Okay, you should say, Lord, I need this help. You know, Lord... I said the thing about Bibles. I give Bibles to people. I buy them and have them delivered. It's cheaper for me just to order them and have them delivered to somebody than for that me to order them, have them delivered to me because you have to pay the delivery, you know, the mailing, and then I put them in another box and mail it off to somebody else. It's cheaper just to have me send it to you. Okay. So, but in that situation, you ask God, Lord, I want a better Bible, or I think I want a Bible, you know. Well, you can't really do that. For a safe sinner, I want a better Bible, Lord, and I can't afford it. Right? You go to God first, then you come across my channel, or then you remember, oh yeah, Brother Philip said that he's trying to help people, and he'll buy better Bibles for people that really want, like, better Bibles, or people that don't really have a good Bible and they need another Bible. You know, their Bible's falling apart and they can't afford one, other than a dollar store. Okay, you come to me, but you need to go to God first. Oh, I need help with this. You go to God first. Well, I can't understand this passage. Well, you ask God, Lord, please help me with this passage. I'm just having a hard time with this passage. Then you go ask a brother or sister in Christ, what do you think about this patch? I've been asking God, and it's just, I'm just not getting it. What do you think? Or God say, I'm thinking leaning towards this, but is that the only meaning there is there? Is that the only thing to get from that? You know what I'm saying? You go to God first. You seek Him first. All right. Matthew 8, chapter 1. Matthew 8, chapter 1, the next Bible if. When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. There's the if. There's a condition. If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I wilt. I will, I will, sorry, be thou clean, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Okay? God's will. Now this is a physical thing. We go to God, it goes back to what I was talking about. You go to God first. Did, um, I'm probably ruining that name by saying Asa, or Asa, you know. He didn't go to God. Okay? He tried to seek the physicians first. You need to go to God first. Then, you know, you can seek a physician. <coughs> okay, First John 1 John 1.9. We're going to talk about the instruction of righteousness when it comes to sinning. Right? When you sin, you hurt yourself. How do we know that? Let's read First John 1 John 1.9. First, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All right? We confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Remember, confession comes from the heart. So the guy's like, if thou wilt, thou make me clean. Or, yeah, thou will make me clean. Well, Jesus can cleanse us from all unrighteousness when we get saved. But even in the life of a Christian, when you ask God to forgive you of your sins, He can, he can cleanse us from all unrighteousness. James 5.16 and I'm doing this in a specific order. James 5.16 Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth 
much. I did the first one saying if we confess our sins, you go to God first when you, come, when you fall into sin and temptation. You need to take it to the Lord first so He can clean you, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Okay? Second, it talks about confessing your faults one to another. And we pray for one another. Hey, I struggle with me. I struggle with movies, TV shows, video games. Um, I try to eat healthy, but sometimes I fall into temptation. Um, uh, worldliness, as far as the secular music and stuff like that. And I struggle. I'm confessing my faults. Mm -hmm. Then I get prayer from the brothers and sisters in Christ. You guys confess your faults to me, and I pray for you. Why? Uh, that ye may be healed. Now don't get me wrong, I'm going to point you to the Word of God, I'm going to point you to Jesus Christ to help you and say, okay, the Bible says you can do all things through Christ with strength. You make sure you're giving it to Jesus Christ. You know, 1 John 1, 15, if we confess our sins, take it to Jesus Christ first. Here's the Word of God. Stay in the Word of God. Uh, pray. I'm going to pray for you. Pray to the Lord about it. Um, stay, like read the Word of God, study. You know, here's some hymns to sing. Uh, get that out of your life. You know, you encourage the brethren through the Word of God. Right? But we pray. Now, like I said, they're in order. You go to Jesus first, then you go to the brethren and confess your faults. And notice it says faults. You don't. First John 1:19. If we confess our sins, you confess your sins to Jesus Christ. Okay? You confess your faults to the brothers and sisters in Christ. You don't go through in the big detail all these sins, individual sins and everything, and cause temptation. You just say, I struggle with this. I have this is my fault. I need prayer, brothers and sisters in Christ. Luke 9, 23, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's what I would say to him. When it comes to the flesh, brothers and sisters in Christ, this is like the memory verse to have when it comes to your walk with the Lord and your struggles with the flesh and temptation. Mm -hmm. Take up your cross, let's see, deny yourself. Okay. Let him deny himself. Lord, help me not to be prideful. Help me to come to you broken and confess my sins to you. Okay. Forsaking, you pick up the cross. I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. God will help you forsake it and get it out of your life. You've got to obey him and get it out of your life. God will help keep it out of your life. Okay. And when you fall back into it, it's your fault, not God's. Just got to throw that in there real quick. Okay. And then you follow Him. You get back to where you left off with the Lord. Okay, That's the encouragement. You pray for brothers and sisters of Christ and you encourage them. Okay? Now it talks about in there, I also wanted to go off a little bit on the side where it talks about, I will be thou clean. It says, if thou wilt. Let's talk about a couple things that are God's will. Okay? Uh, about our attitude towards God's will. I, I forgot, I changed it a little bit. Acts 18.21 But bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you, if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. He was saying, if God wills, it's God's will. Okay. I do that a lot in my life. I'll say, Lord, if, if it be your will, help me with this. Romans 1.10 Another part where Paul's saying, making request, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. By the will of God. God, let it be your will. Is that your attitude, brothers and sisters in Christ? Do you pray for God's will in your life? Remember, you've got to go to God first and take it to God's first. God's will. This kind of, kind of it's, it's so amazing, so amazing how the Bible ties in together. You go to God first. You trust God, you know, His will. Lord, I trust you. I want your will in my life. If there's something I want and I don't get it, I trust you. It's your will. Mm -hmm. When I walk and talk with the Lord, or mainly when I sit down, okay, the night, sometimes the night before, I start planning things to do the next day, and sometimes that morning I'll start doing things. And I should do it more often, brothers and sisters in Christ, but I'll sit there and go, well, Lord, i got to do some work in the garden. 
uh, if it be your will, Lord, please bless it and help me to get the things I'm done. Uh, I've, you know, and then you start going into prayers about, you know, bugs eating, <laughs> eating some of my plants and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? If it be your will, Lord, I, I say that sometimes and I should say it more often. You know, I'm going to do this, Lord, and if it be your will, please bless it. If it be your will, Lord, let me get to this today. Let me do this. There's times where I don't get to things or things just don't go right so I can do it, you know. So, you know, um, Romans 12, 2, okay. Here's another big thing. I just had to throw this one in there. But what is your attitude towards the will of God? Do you want the will of God in your life? If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And what did Jesus say? I will be thou clean. Do you want God's will in your life? Romans 12, 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay? One of the biggest ways to have the will of God and to prove... Uh, and prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God is not to conform to this world. I just wanted to throw that one in there. So we're going to stop there. Uh, this went a little bit longer than I wanted it to. I'm trying to keep these short. But brothers and sisters of Christ, the Bible is for instruction. A lot of this what we're talking about for encouragement is, you know, don't resurrect the old man. You can't have two masters. Don't give in to the cares of this world. Don't give in to the uh, deceitful riches and the lusts of the world. Okay, the flesh. Make sure you're keeping your eyes on the Lord. Okay, uh, it's 100% about Jesus, not 100% about your flesh. It's supposed to be about Jesus first, and then about you know the garden. Jesus first, then the garden. Jesus first, and then what I'm going to eat for dinner because I'm doing this in the afternoon. So you know what I'm saying. So I hope that you got some instruction, righteousness out of this. I pray that you got some encouragement out of this, and I just want to say grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.